Now the big leg of Matt Prater ready to get this one started. And off we go on EA Sports. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Nice pickup. Ten yards and a first down on the keeper. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. On the tackle, it was the West Virginia man, Kaiser White. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he'll pick up about three there, up to the 43. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third down at six. Back to throw. Williams. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 46. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down at six now from the 42. On the option to give to Swift here. And yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. That O line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Stop by Garrett Williams. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellows, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They head to the line, facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. Off the play fake. Williams work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Bears! Keenan Allen. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. 
Right off the bat, they start with a very solid, methodical 10-play drive. And you know me. I tend to look at things from the defensive side. They're coming off the field gassed right away. We're in the first drive of the game. So it's not just what happened, but think of the emotion you carry into a game. Then double it with getting a 10-play drive put on you and points scored. They're pretty tired right now. Santos with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here come the Cardinals, and it is Kyler Murray from Oklahoma who leads him out. And when you have a guy like Kyler Murray under center, it not only opens up your playbook, it allows you to draw up even more plays because he's among the best dual threat quarterbacks in the league and a true playmaker. If flushed out of the pocket, he might even be more dangerous. The next step for him, being able to throw on rhythm and deliver from the pocket. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A short one here caught by McBride. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Defense gives up a touchdown the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Now second and three. Throwing now is Murray. He'll dump this off to Carter complete. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. And they'll send the slot in motion left. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. An ideal start defensively. They already have the touchdown. Now they get the stop. Just like they drew it up on the chalkboard. Does that sound dated? Right? Am I, am I out of touch a little bit? <laughs> it's all right. All right, grease board, heck, computer, exactly what you want, though. Score on your first drive, stop them on the first drive defensively. Here's Jones. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Was hoping to make a play there on the return with his speed. Instead, he makes a play for the other side. Yeah, and how many times have we heard coaches say, you know, sometimes it's not really about those X's and O's we draw up. It's about those Jimmys and Joes. <laughs> and when you have a punt returner, he's one of those Jimmys and Joes, one of the best athletes. He's unable to make the play that they were seeking, though. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Now, right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. To throw is Murray. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion.
Throwing on first down is Murray. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Second and 10. Now Murray again. And his throw is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here's Murray. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Back in Arizona, second quarter action. It's the Cardinals in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And the first play will be a field goal try. And this a 39-yard attempt. Prater's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. Scott on the return out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Yeah, boy, the strength on display there as he rumbles through tacklers for a gain of about eight. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Loose inside the 30. Inside the 10, and he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. DeAndre Swift, 64 yards, and they are able to add on to their advantage. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. 
the concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now the point after try for Santos. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Just a four-play drive that time. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Out of the gun, here's Murray. That's complete to Michael Wilson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Murray now on first down. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Now a second and ten. Murray now to throw. Throwing for the out route, he finds Wilson. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 42. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Throwing again, Murray. Out to the right here to Wilson. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Here's Murray. That's into the hands of Pascal. A gain of eight there on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Concentration, so key on a ball like that. It's hard. I know how difficult it is, but that's a ball you've got to come up with. And instead, a big play is going to slip through their fingers, literally and figuratively. Again, they'll throw with Murray. And that is 
is incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep let's, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Here's Williams looking to throw on second down. It'll go down as a gain of six. And now that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 115 yards on the ground here for Swift, and he's got a first down as well. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Swift going to try up the middle. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. Williams on third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Here's second and 10. Throwing again, Williams. That complete, hits Tyler Scott with it. And they're gonna have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 31-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're gonna give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is gonna be in a lot of trouble. Only able to gain a couple there, and that will bring up second down. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. The 
Let's be smart. Let's, go. Let's go do this thing, man. Oh, yeah. Second down, eight to go from the 28. They'll look to throw again. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession. But the coverage held. It goes incomplete. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Back to throw again. That is caught. And yeah, they are going to have a first down, and they're in field goal range as well as they're down inside the 20. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And again, back to Komet. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We watched a solid performance out of running back DeAndre Swift. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Seventeen three, the score as we resume action for the second half on EA Sports. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. As they begin their second half here, Charles, offensively, you know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game but very much within striking distance. We'll see what adjustments they make in the second half. 
Is that the old glass half full, half empty type of a deal? And which way do you want to look at it? Because you're right, they're down on the scoreboard, but they're definitely opportunities now because if they want to go ahead and get going in this one, get back to the running game. I think there are going to be some places to go with it, and I think the offensive line will appreciate the chance to fire out and hit people. That's a good point because they virtually had nothing going in the ground game in that first half. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. To throw, it's Murray. That's complete to McBride. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Murray going to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Murray now. A short one here caught by McBride. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Now Murray throwing on second down. Goes right back to McBride. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Now second and nine. From the gun, Murray. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. This goes to the goal line. You got to be very careful with the offense calls rub routes. What I call a pick, trying to screen you off from your coverage, does a nice job of avoiding that and helping force an incompletion. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Throwing now is Murray. Flushed out right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Demarcus Walker in there to get him for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. Prater's kick is good. And a second field goal here gets him back within 11 now. It's 17-6. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need them to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. Scott on the return out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half.
Williams now on first and 10. Going deep here for Allen. And this will be caught at the 30. A huge play there for Chicago. 49 yards. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. A handoff, Swift running to the left to the 27-yard line. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Now Williams to throw on second down. Open man here is Scott complete. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And it'll leave them with third and a full yard to go. They'll run with Herbert. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Looking to throw. Williams. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. That he's brought down. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Herbert will take it in. Touchdown, Bears. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Santos now to add the PAT. And the lead is up to 18 now. A drive that time of six plays. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 21. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional, 
in the battle of game plans, theirs has been superior. Connor going to get it again on second down. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A Cardinal first down on a gain of 13. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. To throw is Murray. He completes it to Wilson. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. And you start to think, if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage in a first down. On first and 10 is Connor. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's Cardinal football, but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter. Here's a second and five. Here's Murray from midfield. And that one too wide and incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. The Cardinals on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Now Murray able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 40. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but if they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad from the 33 here's a second down and four Now Murray again. Screen pass to Connor. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Murray now on first down. Down the left sideline and out of bounds all the way down at the three. 23 yards on the play. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. Murray, uh, he's got it. That time the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. Baby, get 
They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Going for it, it's Carter. And he'll be caught behind the line of scrimmage at the three. They stop him on fourth and goal at the three. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, hey you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. 130 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And they'll come up second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Pass completed to Steven Carlson. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch. 
but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. The Cardinals offense ready to set up shop. They're down big here late. I, I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Throwing on first down is Murray. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. That's caught inside the 20. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here's Murray. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Harrison. Now the card's going to call another timeout, their second. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made, pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far, nothing going right offensively. Again, they'll throw with Murray. Flush to his... Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. Whatever it takes, I'll get it. Let's do it. This defense has not surrendered a touchdown yet. You better believe they're determined not to here on third and goal. Here's Murray. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. The decision made for them, they've got to go. It's fourth down. Murray, one final try. And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. Doesn't affect the outcome, but hey, nice job there to put it in the end zone for the final play. Could it affect other things? Sometimes the, these types of scores are ones that we don't consider big at the time. Then later on, we find out maybe that was a tiebreaker. Yeah. Or, of course, in the fantasy football world, these points mean a lot. <laughs> a lot there. Well, on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they played to the final whistle, getting the touchdown there on the last play. But still, all for naught, really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say give them points for positivity. I like that. That part is good. But I often wonder, when the game is settled and the clock is run out, do we really need to kick the extra point? Oh, yeah. It it's, just, it's silly. It's it, silly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know that people have explained before, well, you got to play it all the way through. Come on. This thing was done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long and sign off from the desert.